Hey folks, Jen or Mer Griffin back to take a look at the kick from EvolveVapor.com. I picked mine up from ElectronicSticks.com, Inhalers also selling them, and a bunch of other vendors, um, whoever is selling them for Evolve. Let's take a dive and see what this can and can't do for you. So let's take a look at the kick from EvolveVapor.com, our first power regulated e-cigarette module that comes in this nice little jewel box we'll go ahead and pop it open take a little banner off that tells you where to get the instructions and instruction videos and take a look at our production kick now the first thing you'll notice is the kind of shiny um, shrink wrap that's all around the unit that needs to stay on because that's pretty much what's holding it together and it it leaves the bottom connector open there and then the top part it covers most of but not all again that shrink wrap needs to stay now a couple things you notice right away is the positive battery connector the uh, spring for making the negative or ground connection with the metal inside your mod and the rather large blue potentiometer which we'll take a closer look at right now so screwdriver turn it all the way to the left and you'll notice a five six seven on the left there and on the right side there's an eight nine ten so as far as it goes to the left what's pointing at the five then has it set at five watts and if you take that same line on that cross all the way to ten on the other side now I know that that line is where my marker is so I'm gonna set it between the eight and nine on the right side which is right about where I like my vape eight and a half to nine watts now the idea is, because it works like a Darwin, you can kind of set this and it will adjust to always give you the same wattage so you don't need to play with it again. Now on the right side is a prototype kick that I had. So you can see some of the great improvements that it's been through since the beta stage. The potentiometer is significantly larger and easier to work with. That positive connection um, is wider, so it makes it, it's easier to get a better deal. And there's a nice smooth to that spring. The problem with my spring on the beta model was that it was kind of sharp, and that edge would catch on the sides of mods, and I'd be afraid I'd pull it out. That does not happen on the production unit. It has that nice smooth rounded um, springy bit that doesn't catch on things, and it's a little shorter overall, I think. So, let's go ahead and put it in a mod. Well, let's talk about how it works first. So, it's supposed to take your 18650 based tube mod and make it a power regulated mod. It does that by using the by being in the same space that would take up your 18650 mod. You use an 18500 battery with the kick on top of it. So, same space. You know, you're losing 4 or 5 milliamp hours of usage but you're getting a power regulated vape in the same amount of space now how does it work works just like a darwin without all the bells and whistles i have it set eight and a half watts that's what i like i have a 2.1 ohm atomizer on it it's firing it at 4.3 volts to give me eight and a half watts of power now if i take this 2.1 ohm atomizer off and put a 3.5 ohm atomizer on in order to give me that eight and a half watts it's going to use ohm's law do a little mouth calculation and fire it at 5.5 to 5.6 volts now you'll notice that that voltage was changing it constantly checks and as the resistance of your atomizer or cardamizer changes it adjusts so let's go ahead and get this in our silver bullet i'm going to take out my 18650 i'm going to put in an 18490 18500 they do recommend that you use imr batteries Put your kick on top, and it does need to have that smooth metal, clean metal on the inside so that it is making a connection with the body of your mod to be the ground. And then you put your switch top cap on, and you are ready to power regulated vape. That's all it takes. Now, let's look at some other mods. This is the Bolt. You could use this, it takes an 18500 here, but they have extension tubes for it. 
and I've seen people use the kick in here with an extension tube. So I just want to point out that my bolt has some powder coating on the inside. So it's not clean metal. You might have to sand off some of that powder coating if you have that inside of one of your mods in order to make a good ground connection. Now the bombshell doesn't work very good for two reasons. One, it's anodized on the inside. So it's not going to make that ground connection. You're going to have to sand that anodization off in order for that little spring to make a good ground connection. Second reason it's not really happy in the bolt is the bolt is a little wider than an 18650 battery. So you see the looseness in play here. Now, I could maybe try to hold it to one side and put the top cap of the bombshell on, hoping that it's going to push it down and seal it so that that spring is touching the side. But it doesn't always work that way. The Empire. It does work in an Empire. However, Empires take the batteries in positive end first. So you have to put the kick in first. And sometimes it's hard to get it over that little edge of the two pieces of the body that slide over each other in the Empire. Um, so I have to screw the body sleeve all the way up so that I can get the kick past that little ledge there. And then you put the battery in. If you're just going to set it, not ever change the setting, and you can stick it in there and not ever have to mess with it, you'll be fine with it in the Empire. However, the hard part is, you know, whacking it and getting it out of the Empire since you put it in backwards. But... There you go. Um, one of the great ones that I've been using it in is the GG Telescopic Storm. Now, there's just the telescoping bit under there. I just have number 67 O-rings on it to make it look cool and be grippy. But the nice thing about the GGTS is you'll notice my two here. The top one is as it is with just an 18650 battery in it. So that would be my 18500 plus kit configuration. But on this bottom one here, that's a little longer because the GGTS has so much play. So that one's just an 18650. Now in this top one, I have an 18650 and a kick. Because I can extend the GGTS out so much, I can put an 18650 in there and then make it so I still have enough room for the kick on top and then either the top cap of the GGTS or the UFS or the OD or whatever you're using on top of your GGTS and you can kick an 18650, which will last a little longer than an 18500. Now, Rio Grande, they are metal, and you can easily fit the kick in here on top of an 18500 battery. The issue is, is that is a block of anodized metal. So what you would have to do is see where the kick sits, where that ground spring needs clean metal and you'd have to sand the anodization off there a little bit so that it would make the ground connection. Now another thing I've seen people do, I have not tried this, is this is the Vapage VMod XL. I have seen people run a thin sheet of metal along to ground by that bottom spring so that there is metal up the right side for the kick to hit and make a ground. So the kick don't like it as much as my Darwin because my Darwin gives me more information. On the other hand, it gives me the functionality of a Darwin and something that will stand up with my tanks. That makes me happy. I have one in here. Um, I have one in the GGTS. Um, and this one I actually have a higher ohm car car uh, sorry, a higher ohm atomizer in there. So it's doing really well. Looms. And that, yes, is say eight and a half watts, which is my favorite. Now, that's a caveat. This works great for me because I like that sort of fresh battery level. I mean, I love my version 2 Pro Varies because now I can get 4.2, 4.1, 4.3 volts on a dual coil cardamizer, which is like constant regulated fresh battery. And I, I think that's pretty much what eight and a half watts is generally close to for my vaping experience anyway. So uh, my Darwin almost never leaves that setting. Very rarely will I put a juice or something on there while I will have to bump it up a little bit to, to make it work well for me. So I pretty much have this set between 8 and 9. And it stays there and it works well no matter what I stick on it. Now if you, and you can do 
the math with Ohm's law. If you are, if your voltage squared plus your resistance will give you the, I'm not a mathematician, will give you the right math um, to be under 10 watts, then you're good. If your normal voltage and your resistance of a atomizers or cardamides you like to use is going to bring you over 10 watts as a standard, then it's not going to work well for you because that's its max limit. I think it's almost limited. It's also limited to around 5.5, 5.6 volts or won't go really high. It has some voltage limitation. Same silver bolt that I just had a a 1.5 ohm dual coil cardamizer tank on. I just took the 3 ohm cardamizer tank off the lava tube and put it on here. Same performance, same amount of heat, same amount of vapor, completely different resistance on the atomizer and I don't have to open this up and reset it. So I don't mind that I can't get to the potentiometer right away. So that pretty much breathes some regulated new life into some of my tube mods that didn't have that sort of functionality before. Um, but if you regularly vape at more than 10 watts, and you can find Ohm's Law calculators, if you Google it, there's plenty of them on the internet where you can plug in the voltage you like and the resistance atomizer you like and see what wattage it is you're usually vaping at. There's also ones, for, I have one on my iPhone, I have one on the iPad. You can just plug the numbers in and see where you're normally vaping. Or if you have a Darwin, you'll know. So it's given me some of that functionality in the bunches of silver bullets that I have um, and in the GDTS. So that's been nice. And for $45, that's a pretty decent deal. So for people who like under 10 watt vaping, want to breathe some new life into their tube mods, for $45, it's a great addition. It's also going to be great in the future when we get people making mods that either come with the kick or are specifically designed to use a kick. I would love to use a kick in a Rio. I really don't want to take sandpaper to my Rio so that I can make that negative connection. So maybe we'll see Rios in the future that have, you know, aren't anodized in that band or um, there'll be a mod that comes out that has a special metal plate for the kick to hit and ground out. Um, so remember some of those things we pointed with all the other mods. If you're going to stick it in an empire, you better leave it there for a while because it's hard to get out upside down, but it does work okay. Um, it's not going to work in something like the Mantis because it's all plastic unless you ran some kind of metal up from the ground and put it here for it to hit. But for normal things like the Silver Bullet or a Bolt, if yours doesn't have that extra powder coating inside or your Rio, if you don't mind sanding the anodization away to get some clean metal to make that contact, it works as advertised. If you like really, really high wattage vaping, like I know a lot of other people that have the Darwin I always have it set at like 12 watts. That's too much for me, but if you if that's what you prefer, you're not gonna get that out of the kick. It can't go that high. For what it's designed to do, for what it's advertised to do, for 40, 45 bucks, that's a pretty nice addition to existing mods that you have that can make use of it. So the kick, it's where vaping's going power regulated, wattage regulated, intelligent thinking ones that constantly monitor your resistance of your atomizer and change the voltage that you're getting from the battery to suit that. Now the other bonus is, is that it does have some short circuit protection. So, you know, the only protection that's really in a silver bullet when you get it is that the spring will collapse if the battery gets hot. <clears throat> if the battery does vent, it will vent out behind the switch. Now it has short circuit protection because some of that protection is built into the kick itself. So that's pretty much most of what's uh, about the kick. Um, think about how you vape. Uh, look at a ohm calculator to see if it will give you the power that you need. For some people it's going to work. For some people it's not going to be enough power. It all depends on how you vape. Mm -hmm.